subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Matt and Garrett are back with you again. We're excited to be here. Uh, Today, we're going to go down some different kind of fun routes of uh, commissions and other things, which I'm excited to talk about with everybody. Before we get to that, I do want to make sure that everybody joins us in the podcast community on Facebook. I just looked up the Ninja Selling Podcast in Facebook and you will find us. We will be at 10,000 by the time you hear this and you go there. We're 60 people away right now. I am so excited, at least at the time of recording this podcast. And I want to say thank you to everybody who is part of that group and working with us and sharing their ideas. Because Matt, I was looking at this morning and in 23 minutes, somebody had, I don't know, what was it? 15 comments, 11 comments. It's pretty impressive. On somebody's just simple question that they're looking for some answers for. And that makes me so happy to see the interaction that happens inside that community. So thank you all for doing that. That also does highlight that a lot of y'all are on Facebook first thing in the morning, which maybe we should also. (laughs) Matt, don't punish people. We're celebrating people right now. That's what we're doing. I appreciate that you're actually in our community, though, in the morning, looking for that camaraderie and value add space. Because if you're going to be on Facebook, the place to be is the Ninja Selling Podcast community. It is the Ninja Selling Podcast. That is true. Uh, If you want to know more about Ninja Selling and installations, upcoming opportunities, coaching, if you want to know more about that, you can find all of that in ninjaselling.com. We're happy to help. We'd love to help you grow your business and push you to the next level. In between the next time we talk about this, which is going to be probably in about 30 minutes or maybe a little bit less, we should talk about our topic, Matt. Yes, which is a interesting one and could be a feather ruffling type of topic because whenever the market gets challenging, Garrett, there's a few things that happen. Sometimes scarcity creeps in, which we've talked a lot about and getting into the abundance mindset. So everybody who's listening is already like, yep, nope, not worried about that. I'm gung-ho. But then when we start competing a bit more, which is also something that comes along, Because buyers and sellers are now starting to look a little bit deeper into value. What am I getting from my realtor, right? And in times of change, we've said this before, people flock to value, which then starts the discussion around price. You know, what is the price of this service? How much commission do these real estate agents charge? And the interesting challenge that I see is how do you then look at that and say, all right, how are you going to raise your prices of your services during a challenging time versus I need to figure out a way to cut my price, you know, to get a deal. I actually heard another popular real estate figurehead out there talking about like, yeah, of course I'd cut my commission. Now he was talking about minor, minor, minor adjustments. Like, yeah, I'll go down 0.05 of a percent, you know, let's say it's like four, nine versus five and all that stuff, which are little micro adjustments that we don't think about, which in both directions can make big impacts on your business. But having that, like fighting for that versus proving your value and showcasing why maybe a more expensive service, and you got to decide on what type of service you're delivering out there as well. It's not for everybody. And I don't think everybody has to look at, oh, I need to raise prices. But it's an interesting thought, right, Garrett? Like, okay, in this change, in this time of change, what if we were to offer more services? What if we were to raise the price of our service and provide more and better value? Well, if you look at this marketplace, like, You all as ninjas, some of you have gone through the full installation. Some of you just listened to the podcast. Some of you have read the book. But if you take that skill set of what it means to be a ninja and all the pieces that go into helping guide somebody through the process of buying and selling real estate to looking at the results that you can provide for people through not just, I just help people buy and sell homes, but I help people get to the next stage of life. I help people build a better life for themselves. I help people realize the dreams that they've set for themselves. When you start connecting all those dots about what your true, true, true value is, are you worth the same of what a lot of other realtors are charging for their fees? And this is where I think that you have an opportunity here to basically say, you know what, I'm actually worth more than the average. And you can look at all kinds of services in our industry. I love using, again, I've talked about this many times on the podcast, but I love using restaurants. I can go out and get a meal this afternoon. I can go out to lunch on many, many, many different levels. Even in the little town of Reading, I can go get a simple hamburger at In-N-Out and get that done. 
if we're just talking hamburgers, let's just talk that. I mean, I can go get a McDonald's hamburger. I can go get an In-N-Out hamburger. We've got Gifts in town, by the way. Shout out to Gifts. They have the Ugly Burger there. It's still inexpensive, but man, they provide an amazing meal. I can also go to a really high-end restaurant here in town. I can pay $22 if I want to for a hamburger. Shout out to Moonstone. They're amazing. Still worth the $22. Here's the interesting thing, though. is like, what are they providing when it comes to value? It's all a hamburger. I get hamburgers at all these different places. But some of these guys have said, you know what? We provide a really good hamburger, though. We provide the top, top, top level in town. We're so good that we will charge the highest fee there is for that darn hamburger, and people will still come and order it all the time. And we have this option as a real estate agent. Any business you have, you have this opportunity sitting in front of you, and there are businesses that will open up their doors tomorrow and they're going to look at all what everybody's charging for hamburgers. And they're going to be like, we need to be the most value when it comes to a hamburger because we don't have the product. Yeah. Back it up. Well, you think about all the different things that go into the value of that burger too. I mean, yes, it's the meat, it's the bun, the vegetables, the toppings that go on it, where they source from, how fresh, how are they prepared? It's also the experience though. GIF will give me the finger as I'm taking too long. This is the little hamburger place I was telling you about that. Shout out to GIF. GIF will give me the finger while I'm taking too long to order my burger. And I will pay money for that, by the way, because it's a a funny experience to have somebody literally swear at you going, come on, man, speed it up. I got a line behind you. You're costing me money right now. Like you got to make it go. Like it is the funniest experience. But at the same time, it's an experience. There's something there that makes me go back, that makes my son go, can we go to gifts? I want to go get a gift burger because he laughs the whole time we go through too. And this is part of the understanding your value, which we have a lot of different episodes on that too. But if you understand fundamentally that your value is more than the service that just, you know, getting contracts done, opening doors, all that stuff, then you're going to be able to charge a higher price because you're going to see all these other opportunities that you have to add value to your customers. And I think this is a big part of it. We sometimes disconnect being in flow and attracting new business and taking great care of people just in general with running an exceptional service because taking good care of people outside the transaction, yes, can help support perhaps a higher price point to an extent. But delivering an outstanding experience during the transaction that is far above and beyond anything else that anybody can match in your area, which could just be built on different uniqueness. It doesn't necessarily mean that the prices or whatever that you're achieving for people are different, although it could be. That's what's going to help you raise a price. And you know, I look at this commissions, right? And I think these micro adjustments are things that we miss. So taking a $500,000 transaction to make the math easy. People say, well, we either raise or reduce commissions by half of a percentage and sometimes full percentage points, right? We just make these big leaps, which are significant. They're big leaps. If you talk about like on a scale of like 100%, whatever you decide that, that what a normal fee is that you might charge and you reduce it by 1%, like that's a huge adjustment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a huge. I mean... On a $500,000 listing, 1% on your side is $5,000, right? Half of that, a half a percent adjustment is going to be $2,500. But now what if you you said, okay, instead of charging 3% for my fees, I charge 3.1 on my side. That's $500 extra, which is not a whole lot of money. But if you do 20 deals a year, you know that could be a significant difference to your income. Now you got a backup service and all that stuff. And by the way, for those of you who think we're talking like number oh this everybody should be no everybody should be charging whatever they feel comfortable with and everybody should be willing to negotiate their fees and all that good stuff too right the real estate industry is an interesting place where we keep all this stuff so secret clients can't even know what the price is for our services until they sign a contract with us like that's bs everything else that you go buy out there the prices is clearly displayed online and all this kind of stuff. Now, I know that gets into a whole nother discussion that we're not going to go down in this podcast. Chicken. All this stuff is out there publicly for other products and services. But for yourself, being able to be comfortable to have these conversations with people. Now, this isn't something where somebody calls you and says, hey, Garrett, what do you charge? And you're just like, hey, this is my fee. We need to have a deeper discussion because unlike 
a restaurant where there's experiences that you can see, that you can easily read reviews about, or you can go and kind of just test the waters for yourself. Hard to do that with the services of a real estate advisor, right? But this gets into what are you providing people also up front to, to start to defend your value early on? And this is where in a challenging market, there's so much opportunity to add incredible value to buyers and sellers up front that can then help you support whatever commission that you like to charge, as long as it's reasonable. I mean, obviously, there's charts to this. You can't be overcharging people. But here's the crazy thing. And this is where I get interested in like commission structures and like what is, everybody goes like, what's a normal fee? Like what do people normally charge? I hate that. I hate when people are like, oh, this is, this is the standard. It's like, stop telling people that it's the standard out there because that's the problem that the FTC and all these people have with how commissions are talked about. So I look at it and go like, well, is there a way to charge 10% for a listing? I 100% agree there is. You can totally set up a business that would allow that level. Let's look at it this way. Let's look at your real estate office that you work in. You all have splits. There are certain companies that they own every single penny of taking 50% of the commission that you earned. Like they earn it. Like everybody goes, oh, why would you pay that much? Oh, you got to be kidding me. Like they're just raking in the dollars and they're leaving you high and dry. A lot of those companies, if you go sit down and really look at the value that they're providing, and the professionalism that they're bringing into your business, a lot of those you could walk away from and go, you know what? That's probably the best 50% of my commission I could have ever spent. Value is an interesting thing that sometimes we look at it face value and we just go like, well, obviously the best choice is to go with a 100% commission or a 95% commission split with, with any company. Just go to an office that has that. And you step back and you really start looking at, but what am I getting for my money? And you go, you know what? I see the value in it and I see where they're going and what they're trying to build and where they're trying to go to. And you can do this in your own personal real estate business also. And I think it's, it's a really good practice to step back and say, okay, one is what value am I offering? Second is do the customers perceive the value? And do I have a position that I'm putting myself in where they can actually see the value of what I'm offering? And most people don't get to see it until they're working with you, which is why People are better referrers once they've done a transaction with you because they've got the chance finally to see not only does he talk a big game, but man, that dude shows up. And now I want to go tell my friends about him. And I want to want to share this awesome experience I just had working with Matt Benelli. Like this is where our value gets kind of weird in all this. We negotiate this commission up front and we have our value that we follow up with after the time that we've actually addressed what we're they're going to be paying for our services. How well are you showing your value up front? And this is where a lot of people go like, man, I just get beat up on commissions. It's like, they have no idea how cool you are. That's the problem up front. Show them how cool you are. Help them understand how cool you are, what you're bringing to the table. And then if you want to, charge more if you can back it up. And this marketplace, Matt, that we're going into right now, that we are already treading water in and we're figuring out what this marketplace looks like and how we're working with people, this is a time when you come to a listing agent looking for how do we navigate this situation that we have in front of us right now. It is not the marketplace of a year ago, two years ago, where it's like, what, we sell a house? Great. Here, just give me whatever. Do you have pictures on your iPhone? Here, just give me your pictures. I'm going to put them in the MLS. We're going to put it out there because you know, I don't have time to come by and take pictures. We got, I got other listings I got to process right now. Just get them up on the internet. We're going to get this damn thing sold. <laughs> That's a little exaggeration, so bear with me. That's not an exaggeration. I know people who do that. I've seen the listings out there. You can't hide them. One of my coaches sent me a photo, and it literally had somebody asleep on the staircase, a full-grown woman asleep on the staircase in the photo of the front room of this house. Amazing. It's just amazing stuff that we got away with in the last two years. Oh, but people do that still. I know. I know. That's not a new thing. But going into this marketplace right now, this is where people want a professional. They seek a professional and charge for it. You're awesome. Charge for it. I love the comparison to splits at a brokerage. It is relative and I think it's easier for us to understand because like, oh, we're experiencing that now because it's true. 
you all know it too, like cap brokerage versus a non-cap. And you can see all the different services, large brokerage versus boutique brokerage. And we make those decisions based on value. Now, you do have to understand what your differentiation is. And I do think professional photography and things like that are parts of that differentiation. But you also have to think about like, well, what is kind of now standard in, of services that we should be providing, you know, versus you have people who say, well, I do all these things. That's why I want to charge more. Well, if the next guy is doing all those things and providing a great value and not charging as much as you, we're not differentiated enough. And I think that's where we do fall into some traps. So would you fully understand what that value is? Then I think it's easy to, and I think there's opportunity to find where are the places we can provide better value in a market like this. And yeah, that does charge more. Think about it this way too, Garrett. If you're an agent out there, like I'm going to hire Garrett. He's charging me, you know, 4% on the listing side alone, right? Like, okay, people are like, wow, that's a lot, right? But now Garrett is also getting higher compensation for servicing my listing. He's bringing more value. And how much more time, Garrett, are you going to be able to dedicate to your clients if you're getting paid more per client too? Like the level of service that you're going to give. I mean, we're all great people, particularly ninjas. We're going to give high level of service across the board, probably regardless of price. However, in the back of your head, when you're taking on that 2% deal or when you're going into that new construction office and they're only paying you 1500 bucks, a little part of you is like rentals, right? Happens all the time. Oh, I don't want to do rentals. It's not worth my time. I don't get paid enough. Great. That's a good example to refer to because I know if I'm paying Garrett more and he's really bringing the value, you're worth it. I've heard it from everybody. Uh, I got friends who've experienced the Garrett Fry effect on a listing. People talk about it all the time. All the time. And you're going to pay a lot more attention to that client. And why wouldn't you? They're paying you more. I think it's a great example, Matt, that you're bringing up here right now. Because again, you look at a high-end restaurant, you look at the amount that they charge for certain meals, and then you look at the size of the restaurant. Like the amount that they're able to give you really amazing service because they're not managing 50 tables. They're managing four tables. And those four tables are their highest priority. And they get that time to be able to walk over and stand there and talk with you and give you that extra level of service. They have the time to be able to make sure that everything that comes out is not being rushed out of the kitchen and thrown down in front of you because they got to get to the next table. Because we know the greasy spoon restaurants that we go to that's like, order up and boom, that plate's flying from the counter, slam down on your table, kind of get your catch up and then boom, they're running off where you got the other people that like, they pick up your plate and they have this little cool utensil that's just there to scrape just the crumbs off in front of you because you don't want to go into your dessert with crumbs on your table. Like, let's get all those out of the way for you so it's nice and clean. You know what? Let me get you some fresh utensils. Let's get all these out of the way. We're going to bring in some fresh utensils that are perfect. They have the time to offer that experience because they charge more. They have the time to do it because they charge more. This is, I think, a really interesting dynamic that, Matt, you brought up, which, again, I'm loving right now. I mean, you can tell, but I'm really enjoying it. Because I think a lot of us get so much into, like, I need more. I need more deals, more stuff, more people to help. And think about that. If you just raise your fees a little bit, you can raise the product that you're actually offering to people. And then all of a sudden, you get to do more of that. By the way, is what I would like to be doing. And... I'll add the counter side to that just, you know, to pull this around is you also don't have to. You can decide what level of service that you provide. There was a um, discount broker up in my market when I was in New Jersey, and I had a chance to talk to him a few times and a really nice guy. But he was one of those flat fee, you know, he'll charge you 500 bucks and give you MLS access and you manage it on your own as the seller. Top listing agent in the state right? Most listings and people, oh, but like what horrible service. He was totally fine with it because he knew what service he was delivering and the people who signed up knew what they were getting. And he charged appropriately for the value that he was providing. And he is running a super successful, likely profitable business doing that. He just made the decision that that's the level of service he's going to provide and that's it. And he drew the boundaries there. I know a lot of ninjas may not be comfortable with that. I wouldn't be. But that doesn't mean it's wrong. It's understanding what your business model is. This is perfect right now for everybody who's going through business planning or just major business plans right now. 
understand what your business model is. There is no right or wrong way. The, whatever value and service you want to do, if you want to offer a very, very, very discounted business because you offer these very simple systems and that's what they're going to get from you, there's a marketplace for it. There's people that will pay money for it all day long. There's a huge marketplace for it. At the same time, when we look at like restaurants, this is the beauty of getting to have a choice of where I'm going to go eat this afternoon or tonight. I have all these different options in front of me and they're not all the same. They're all very different experiences. That Greasy Spoon restaurant that I mentioned, I can think of like three off the top of my head in town. They are successful business models. They understand their numbers. They understand what they're pricing, what, they're, what type of quality of food they're buying from their vendors so they can put on the table in front of you. They're not buying the same stuff that the other places are buying because they have a business model. They have parameters. They have a budget they're working with. Still very successful. And I think that that's really important, Matt, what you said is that we're not telling everybody to raise it to this level. It's understand your business model. And if you want to provide this upper level, charge for it. And the opportunity is definitely there in this market. So, well, Garrett, thanks for hashing on this. I know it, we probably touched on a few things that can create other podcasts if we wanted to go down that path, maybe leave some of those conversations for the peanut gallery. But I appreciate exploring this. I, I do think there's a whole opportunity here when it comes to how we price our services and how we conduct our services and the value we bring that can also impact the lifestyle of an agent as well. So think about that, guys when you're kind of going through this thought process. So hopefully this stimulated some thought around the services that we provide and, and what we charge for it. So appreciate you exploring this with me, Garrett. I didn't have a choice. That's true. I did tie your hands behind your back from 3,000 miles away. You're like, this is the topic today. This is what we're doing. So I was like... <laughs> well, I will appreciate everybody for joining us and listening as always. You can check out more about our community at facebook.com slash group slash The Ninja Selling Podcast. Join in there, ask questions, interact with people, interact with us, comment. We're posting these episodes now in there too so that people can comment on particular episodes as they come through. And if you need to learn anything more about Ninja Selling, head over to ninjaselling.com and appreciate you guys very, very much. We'll see you on the next one. You know where I mess up the outro all the time, Matt? This is where you get in all the forward slash backslashes, parentheses, all this stuff that somebody has to type out. Just go to the Facebook group and search the Ninja Selling Podcast and you'll find us. That's true. Yeah. You don't have to type it in. Nobody types all that in. Just search the Ninja Selling Podcast. All right. Thanks, everyone. Love you guys. Be well. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the Ninja Selling Podcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.